writing is based on a simple concept that really works. That communities, like people, suffer from disease and can be healed. All it takes is for an individual or group to relax into a calm state of mind and send healing thoughts to a local focal point in your community for a few moments of your time each day. The story of Fountain is an amazing one. It has shown how we can all contribute to healing the world. If we look at the study of quantum physics, we see how our individual thoughts do actually affect our external reality. How at the deepest level of our being we are all one. If enough of us can hold to thoughts of peace, can send out unconditional love into the world, this will affect group consciousness, which Fountain has shown manifests through the energy lines or the lay system of planet Earth. One of the things I hear all the time is, but what can I do, mate? I'm just one bloke. I'm just one person. I'm just one woman. What, what can I do? I've I got no power. Uh, in fact, we are affecting the world with every thought and with every emotion and with every belief. The work of Masaru Emoto shows the profound effect our thoughts have on our surroundings. Emoto photographed the changes that took place in the molecular structure of water after being exposed to human thought. This work has important implications for healing when we remember that the human body and the Earth's surface is around 70% water. Well, I, w I was fortunate enough to be there um, on the night that Colin invited uh, a series of people, about 20 um, healers of different uh, persuasions, to come together to discuss his idea of healing places. The problem in Brighton was juvenile violence every weekend. And the question was, should we, could we treat that as a collective illness and heal it? And we sat down and said, right, well now, this isn't a job for one healer or two or three or four, it's a job for a group of healers. We took the fountain in the old steam and steadily focused our thoughts on this each day. The energies would build up and go out through the energy lines which meet at that point and, and do in fact encircle the earth as we know and from here it would spread as ripples on a pond and if people in adjacent towns or villages did the same thing so the ripples would meet and so cover the earth. Around 100 people from all walks of life joined in a group meditation on St Michael's Day, 1981. Colin had doused the energy lines and found that after the group meditation they had multiplied thousands of times in power. Colin's later research showed that the energy lines are the collective consciousness of humanity and that changes in the energy field affect individual and group behaviour. Subsequently, gang violence in Brighton decreased and the technique of community healing spread to neighbouring towns and eventually throughout the world. It was at the time when the world international news was in a very parlous and threatening state and I thought, okay, this idea of fountain appealed to me but I thought well, we can all do something about this in our own little way. And from that I got totally hooked on this idea of daily sending out lies. It appeals to me because of its sincerity, its naturalness and purity, because there are no books of rules, there is nobody making sure you're doing the right or the wrong thing. It's very much your personal gift to the world and all living beings in the earth and in the universe. It is an act of love and it's selfless love and it's without judgment or question. I think Fountains for me as a GP, not because I'm a practicing GP, but because I'm a person who cares uh, and because I'm a person who's interested in healing. And I think there are an awful lot of people on the planet who actually think the same way. Yeah, we went out to Egypt to go and do some earth healing work and we went into the Great Pyramid uh, as a group and um, I took in my flute and we sent out some healing vibes. Um, we chanted the Om and, and it was just incredible, the, the power that was created within there. We also um, 
spend extra time on our own town of Leamington. And amazing things have happened since we've done that. There used to be a lot of problem in the area. And since we've been doing that, the whole ch thing has changed. They've, the actual county council have, have mended things that were broken and everything's much more, the ambience is much better. It is such a simple idea that every single person can utilise. And this is what fountain groups throughout the world have shown. Um, uh, Roger Brown in Australia did some amazing work where they, um, uh, they would target with um, fountain energy, uh, prisons, mental asylums, uh, crime hotspots, that sort of thing. And they kept strict records and found out that crime decreased in areas where um, fountain activity was taking place, um, that people within prisons, for instance, changed their attitude towards things. Um, it's actually probably the most powerful tool in the universe. The fall of the Berlin Wall provides an amazing example of how positive change can come about through the power of thought. Fountain groups were based on both sides of the wall and when the energy lines in East and West Berlin were balanced, the wall came down. Not with the expected conflict, but as a peaceful celebration. I worked with Colin for 10 years in Austria, in Switzerland, in Germany. I visited the Zodiac in, in Barcelona, in Spain. Some of the world's leading authorities on sacred sites and healing have been involved with Fountain for many years. Uh, there is a, the, the, it's a fundamental difference between, between uh, uh, energy lines and ley lines. Ley lines are actually a straight connection of, I think it's four or five uh, sacred sites and they're a straight line across the landscape. As far as I'm concerned, they, are, they exist because they point out the importance of the energy below them. And the earth energy is just a massive cobweb of tens of millions of little energy lines which are the earth's nervous meridian system. And this nervous and meridian system is so delicate, it responds to, to human consciousness. And uh, the sooner we realize this, the better. <laughs> because this is, this, is about, this is about sacred place, and this is what Fountain is about. It's choosing a sacred place, which, which is, is the strongest one in the locality, and developing it through your own consciousness. If you have a dozen people uh, recognizing it, it, it comes up and responds, and it's actually responding with mathematical symbolism, and, and Colin was the first one to point this out. The, the lines and the energy are the life force of the planet, and, and because we're a whole part of the holistic organism of the Earth, uh, they're part of our life force as well, our whole life force is part of them, so it, it connects us directly to our spiritual dimensions. And, um, and links us to them and enables us to bring through in turn those healing energies from the spiritual dimensions into the earth. And the Vedas speak of the Kundalini energy. This is the serpent or dragon energy that is in the earth and it rises up through the feet and energizes the, the centers of the body, the spiritual centers of the body and is available for transmutation into higher levels of higher consciousness. I think this is where the fountain idea comes into its own because the whole earth is covered with a web of energy. Certain places in particular concentrate that energy. This energy responds to human consciousness. It is directly affected by the way we think. And this is really the root of all ancient ritual, I believe in religions all over the world. They understood this. The rituals were designed to transform these energies from a low vibratory rate into a higher vibratory rate. Some people use dowsing to measure the fountain effect. Well, this is, uh, it's a natural extension of a power center. It was, if I go over here, that's the one edge of the line that comes from Trencrom, which is up over there. And it goes right down through the centre and, and disappears into the field down here. It's, it's not a big line, but it's that wide. And apart from that, the, from the power centre, there are, there are 20 radials coming out. There's a terrific vortex, terrific spiral here, which you can pick up from way out in the end of the field. And then these stones were quite deliberately placed because they, they mark each one of the 20 radials.
We're here in our local woodland that we help to manage and it's a focal point for our fountain work. And through dousing the energy lines, we're able to show how our work over the last year of meditation and ceremony has really empowered the space to make it a wonderful place for healing and harmony. From the earliest times, mankind has recognized the power of these lines to influence health and consciousness. Where they intersect, they form powerful node points, and it's no coincidence that ancient sacred sites and modern places of power are built upon them. Well, today here we are actually on top of Trenkrom Hill where we can actually capture the sighting of um, another node point over in the distance there. And here we have the rock beneath our feet which will actually create a natural um, uh, example of, of the artistry in nature. And if we follow this arrow back off Trenkrom we can actually see it points out into the distance there uh, of looking at into St Michael's Mount and across the whole of St Michael's Bay. It's just an amazing opportunity in the landscape to pin these points out, actually go and visit those points and actually communicate with the earth in those points, in those natural temples. A vast knowledge of the earth's subtle energy system was once understood and various structures have been built to enhance and utilize the terrestrial and cosmic forces at these places. And it's, it's, it's to do with healing the earth. And as soon as people come to a place like this, for instance, they feel good. But as far as I'm concerned, the earth energy develops into cosmic energy, into the absolute connection with your, the final place we want to be, which is with our creator. Fountain holds many events at locations around the world. These are opportunities to meet like-minded people and deepen your awareness of healing and harmony. Yeah, I came to the Abbot's Kitchen to a service that Giles has held. We did a meditation and it was really, really nice. But prior to going into the kitchen, I actually doused around it first. And in actual, in actual fact, the energy were down a little bit and it needed a bit of help. It was sort of fractured. But after the service, it was absolutely marvellous. And I've just doused it again and it's absolutely singing now. It's really, really wonderful. The objective of fountain work is to send love for the greater good of all. Naturally, some places need greater attention than others. Yeah, the, the Earth Stars is, is a, a, a geometric pattern, a pattern of sacred geometry in the sacred sites of London. Uh, it forms a landscape temple that covers the whole of London. It's not something I set out to discover. Um, the first three sites that brought it to my attention were identified by dreams, and from the fountain perspective, it was very clear from the first dream that, that it was for the healing of the landscape. It, it's a pattern of churches to be used for the healing of the landscape. And as I followed the geometry 
through London it became a very complex construction which is one of the most important uh, constructions of sacred geometry, the squared circle, uh, which is the same design that the megaliths of Stonehenge were laid out on three and a half thousand years ago. Um, we also understand that there's a site like this uh, been here for centuries is actually interactive with the community grid or what we call the lay system that goes all the way around the world. The greatest appreciation I guess that we need to value is not necessarily the lines so much as the node points and what we mean by a node point is an earth temple node point. So whether it's got a building such as this or whether it's an alcove of trees or whether it's a stone circle if we revere the place and can bring healing to it, we are actually, actually affecting the whole of the community. I've started a fountain group in Braintree because I think that on the whole, especially this area, does could do with some nice vibes and a nice bit of healing. Fountain work can be done alone, but many people enjoy being part of a group. Starting a group is easy. Why not ask friends and family to join you? Health food shops and libraries are good places to let people know about your group. There is also a great deal of useful information on our website. Meetings can take place in people's homes or a local hall. The essence of fountain work is to focus healing thoughts on a focal point or hara in your community.